This is a video preview of the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible Premium Imitation Leather Edition. The KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible offers an unparalleled selection of helps designed to encourage the study of God's unchanging Word. The Rock of Ages Study Bible is a revision of the New Pilgrim Bible, which was an updated and enhanced edition of the original work that was first released in 1948. The purpose of the Rock of Ages Study Bible is to aid your study and understanding of God's Word and to open up and demonstrate a clear picture of the holiness, the justice, the mercy, the love, and the grace of God to sinful men and women through God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are looking for a truly fundamental King James Study Bible, you found it. As the title page states, the Rock of Ages Study Bible has study notes you can trust. With book introductions, in text notes, bottom of page notes, in text charts, and in text maps. A large print size 10 font, and a premium imitation leather edge lined binding. This Rock of Ages Study Bible Premium Imitation Leather Edition features supple premium imitation leather, a beautiful cover that is thick, textured, and indistinguishable from genuine leather. It has a rich and attractive feel and a soft feel to the touch. With raised hubs on the spine, and its edge line binding with superior flexibility, is made to last and withstand heavy usage. The combination of line to the edge style and Smythe sewn pages provides extreme flexibility that will lay flat and stay open even when open on a desk or pulpit and even in the first books of the Bible. And will easily fold and bend in the hands featuring four ribbon markers, gold gilded page edges, and a presentation gift box. The roots of the Rock of Ages Study Bible and New Pilgrim Bible stretch back nearly 75 years. Now, this edge-lined premium imitation leather edition is available for those who appreciate edge-lined bindings at a more economical price. The Bible itself is very nice. We've already seen the burgundy gift box, but when we see the term luxurious, soft, black, premium imitation leather cover, it definitely does apply to this Bible. Uh, admittedly, when I first heard that term premium imitation leather, I was admittedly a little skeptical, uh, but having unboxed and inspected this Bible, as you're seeing here on the video uh, very closely, I can confidently say that premium is an accurate descriptor. Um, as we always do, if you were to close your eyes and just gently rub your finger across this cover, uh, if you didn't know any better and someone just handed this to you blindfolded, uh, you might think that you're feeling uh, the softness of calfskin leather there, uh, certainly a genuine leather. And the technical term for this is most likely a polyurethane, uh, but either way, it's very soft um, and it gives the Bible a premium feel and appearance. And it's a, a definitely premium, but at a more economical price. But you can still see a lot of texture, a lot of character there. Um, again, looks a lot like a leather cover. And more budget-conscious KJV buyers should find this to be a solid value amongst KJV study Bibles. As we show here on the spine, it's Holy Bible, Rock of Ages Study Bible, Authorized King James, and then the Rock of Ages seal at the bottom. And we know this Bible is edge-lined so that it's going to open easily, see that lining, and then close easily as well. And as we've briefly shown, it will lay flat, brand new out of the box, there about the middle of the Bible, Song of Solomon. It's completely unstressed, of course. It can fold in half and bend and crease as you need it to. Whether you're holding in one hand or with two, it's got a nice floppy feel in the hand if you were publicly reading or preaching from this Bible. And it certainly has excellent flexibility. The cover here, of course, it can roll and bend and crease any way that you need to. And then this is one of those times where uh, we say, whenever we talk about quality imitation leather lining, uh, with the end paper reinforcement, this is a rare instance where the imitation leather stamp on the inside 
actually matches the exterior cover as well since this is a premium imitation leather exterior but an imitation leather on the inside but we always like to show this on our videos of course um, so this uh, these pieces if I can grab them there um, these pieces of paper are stuck together uh, so this is imitation leather lining on the left this is a black piece of end paper on the right and it is intentionally stuck together to this white heavier piece of cardstock or thicker cream paper and it's done to reinforce that binding and reinforce the tab of the edge line binding and give it part of that edge line style um, so but again pretty cool that uh, and make no mistake imitation leather lining is still absolutely superior to something you're going to find in a paste off style that are not edge line style at all um, and then we also of course we see this uh, sewn uh, edging and perimeter stitching on the outside cover uh, you're seeing there that just goes all the way around the outside you can also see it of course on the inside and as we always like to show this is where that inside uh, imitation leather flap is tucked into the exterior cover it's tucked in and then that exterior part fl uh, flips over and, and basically is sewn there um, that is where you're getting that term edge lined it's lined there at the edge and uh, or line of the edge style um, so that's the, it's just another sign of quality showing that uh, basically when it's tucked in and sewn like that uh, it's going to be much harder to pull that binding apart um, these Bibles uh, will know that they are printed and bound in the USA, extremely rare these days. Um, there are four ribbon markers, one, two, three, four. You're getting gold gilded page edges. You can see the pop of the light and the gold on there. Really beautifully done on this Rock of Ages Bible. And then the size, the width is about six and three fourths inches wide by nine and three fourths inches tall. And then it's about one and three fourths inch thick. And this is a good time to mention this is the difference one of the uh, small differences in the old seventh edition printing from 2018 and this ninth edition printing uh, in 2020 it's that the dimension specifically the length that's the the longest side of course um, it's about uh, it's about another inch or half an inch uh, taller in length there um, basically that's because they added more room in the top and bottom of page margins as we're going to see um, so on the old edition um, this bottom margin was cut off quite a bit um, and you're you're now getting a lot more room it makes the text a little less crowded and busy on the page that's kind of nice and then also that exterior margin uh, you're getting that on both sides that appears to be that might be slightly larger than the old edition uh, that's about a one inch margin um, so while we should certainly wouldn't call you're seeing there we certainly wouldn't call this a wide margin edition or wide margin Bible um, you could you could still definitely make a couple of abbreviations or small notes there next to the text if you wanted to um, and it's still definitely thick but the thickness has not changed uh, one and three-fourths inches thick that's to be expected from a study Bible um, but remember this is a truly large print study Bible a size 10 font uh, so the thickness and footprint of this Bible for a large print study Bible is really very manageable by comparison as we get to the inside features of the KJV Rock of Ages study Bible you can know that they're going to be the same regardless of the binding on the exterior cover they're all going to feature a 22 pound US Bible paper weight which is equivalent to a roughly 30 to 32 GSM uh, European Bible paper the first thing we get to in the Rock of Ages study Bible is the presentation page and there's also a brief family record section this appears on a thicker cardstock type paper they're beautiful and very elegant and we saw the title pages Rock of Ages study Bible we know it has study notes you can trust this is also a good place to look for that evidence of the Smithson binding you can see the thread that's appearing there that's part of what gives this Bible its longevity it's going to help the pages stay in this Bible keep from falling apart Contributors include Dr. Terry Ellis, Dr. Ricky Dunsford, and Dr. Jerry L. Rockwell. Then there is this massive content section, several pages in length, that lists out all of the charts, maps, and articles that appear in the Rock of Ages Study Bible, such as the Journeys of Abraham here on page 32. So it kind of works as sort of an index to the Rock of Ages Bible. Uh, any of the specific notes or charts, things like that, uh, you want to come here and it'll tell you where to find that particular article, chart, or set of notes here in the Rock of Ages Bible.
Then we get to the introduction to the Rock of Ages study Bible, which is going to list and explain all the various features of the Rock of Ages. We've already read the Rock of Ages as a revision of the New Pilgrim Bible, which was originally released in 1948. Again, the term 75 years of truth. The features include, of course, the text. It's a nice, large print size 10 font and uses the King James Version, a beautiful King James Version, as any good study Bible should, in our opinion. Uh, then the asterisk, that's going to indicate that a word or phrase is explained in either a note and that it will also be included in the subject index at the back of the Bible. Then there are in-text outlines. This divides the text of each book of the Bible into section headings. And then there's also going to be book introductions at the beginning of all 66 books of the Bible. They're going to provide additional information to help the reader understand the background of that specific book. There are articles that cover large sections of the Bible or certain topics. Lots of good examples of those. The study notes. There are thousands of detailed study notes covering significant terms. They're going to appear both in the text and at the bottom of the pages. This is pretty unique among study Bibles. Uh, there are maps and charts, which again, not just limited to the back of the Bible like a lot of study Bibles. These are going to be in-text maps. 35 in-text maps and 32 in-text charts. There are dates in the Rock of Ages study Bible. We know that those are going to be from Bishop James Usher, famous author of the Annals of the World, um, which he systematically calculates the date of the creation of the world. Uh, that's typically used in the most well-known KJV study Bibles. A subject index, that's always a great study feature. It's an index of topics. It's a good place to kind of begin your study or study in reverse if you want to look at a particular topic in that subject index in the back. And then, of course, the concordance. There's a concise concordance to the King James Version. Helps you locate key verses about Scripture. The About the Bible and its Author page, it briefly explains that there were 40 different authors who collectively wrote the 66 books of the Bible. That's worth reading. Then an article on how we got our English Bible. Two favorite quotes from this article here under the original manuscript says that Bible believers hold to the fact that the King James Bible is the preserved word of God according to Psalm 12, 6 through 7. We have the pure words of God available today, just as those of the first century and earlier, and we can know what God has said by reading the KJV. And since the appearance of the King James Version in 1611, there have been many other translations of the Bible into English. The King James Version is surpassed by none. The King James Version has not been equaled, let alone surpassed. And then finally, the King James Version will always hold the highest place as the preserved Word of God. Then a section entitled Concerning the Old Testament, which provides background info and gives an overview of the four major sections of the Old Testament, such as the Pentateuch or Books of the Law, Books of History, Poetry, and Prophecy. Only then do you get to the book introduction of the first book of the Bible called Genesis, and the outline of which of the book of Genesis extends to the back of the second page. And then we get to the actual biblical text of Genesis 1-1. And you're seeing our first shot here, our two-page spread, uh, and a good overview of what the uh, layout of the Rock of Ages study Bible looks like. But rather than starting in the book of Genesis, as we did on our previous Rock of Ages video, definitely worth watching if you'd like to see a more thorough overview of Genesis, by the way. But we've come here to the book of John. And we're seeing, of course, again, really nice overhead shot here getting a very good idea already of the layout, the features, and the various things that are going on with the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible. So John, the book introduction, we're already seeing here the writer and the theme, it's, it's the Apostle John. The theme is that John gives his reason for writing in John 20, 31, which is to show that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of all who believe on him. We're already starting to see the outline of the entire book of John. Only then do you get this uh, horizontal line, uh, double separation there. Tells you that's the end of the book introduction and outline. Then you get to the biblical text itself. So we see there John 1.1, 1, 1, of course, which is, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that nice size 10 font, that's our KJV Store Company verse, by the way. Uh, always a good one to read. Uh, we're seeing uh, several things going on. We're already seeing um, these subheadings here. 
that uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ as the light, uh, introduction of Jesus Christ as the word of God. You're going to see that that's going to match the number one, uh, the Roman numeral one of introduction, Jesus Christ as the word of God from the outline. Uh, over here on the right hand side, you're seeing witness of the Baptist. Um, that's the Roman numeral two. That's the same as Roman numeral two, witness of the John the Baptist here on the actual outline. Uh, you're seeing in text notes over here, 1-1 one, one, the word, 117 the law. You're seeing these bottom of the page notes. They're very easy to identify because they're separated by a much thicker horizontal line. Um, just lots of stuff going on. And we'll get into these features a little more closely. Sliding over and focusing only on the left-hand page, the first page of the book of John, getting a closer look here again, that book introduction, which always is going to include the writer and the theme, uh, the writer and time, the theme, the outline of that book, Again, your subheadings here, we read the text of John 1.1, 1, 1. we're seeing the bottom of page notes. The main thing to look for here as we take a little closer look at John 1.1, 1, 1, taking a closer look at the text of John chapter 1 verse 1, and remember, there's that asterisk, there's an asterisk next to God, and the word was God. And remember that the asterisk, uh, that is going to indicate that a word or phrase is explained in a note or notes, which could be at the bottom of the page. It could also be explained in an in-text note. And then also, finally, we know that that is going to be included in the subject index at the back of the Bible. But starting with the notes, we can see very clearly here, John 1.1, 1, 1, here's the 1.1, 1, 1, and there is that bottom of page note called In the Beginning. It says this introductory statement does two things. First, it takes one back to Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, and at that point, only God was. John says the Word was there as well. Second, this gives an important designation to the Word. John states unequivocally that the Word was God. When you consider John 1.14, it is clear the reference is to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. Without question, Jesus is God. If we zoom back out to the full two-page spread, after having read the bottom of page note of the asterisk on John 1.1, 1, 1, there's that asterisk, we also see a 1-1 one, one called the Word. That's called an in-text note. And zooming in on this 1-1, one, one, the word, in-text note, we know it's an in-text note designated with this gray shading or gray background. And we can read that the word is one of the most wonderful names used to describe the Lord Jesus Christ and his work. Words reveal thoughts and character. And so the Lord Jesus expressed God's thoughts and showed us what God is like. God had partly revealed himself before to the prophets and to the children of Israel, but they had not been able to approach him, for they were sinful and God is holy. The Lord Jesus came to show God's love and that the Father wanted to save people from sin. He told his disciples, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, in John 14, 9. And the Bible is also called the Word of God because it is the written record of his thoughts and ways. So, those notes actually echo each other. We just read on the 1-1 one, one in the beginning note at the bottom of the page um, that Jesus is God and Jesus Christ is the Word of God. And once again, the Word, one of the most wonderful names used to describe the Lord Jesus Christ and His work. That they are, they are all the same. That's, the, that's an example of, again, the asterisk, how it can refer to both a bottom of page note or also an in-text note. And remember, it also means that's going to appear in the subject index. And for a quick sneak peek of the subject index, we've come to the back of the Rock of Ages Study Bible. And looking things up alphabetically in the subject index, we just came from John 1.1, 1, 1, reading about in the beginning was the word. I'm looking for B beginning at the bottom right of this page, 1854. Zooming in on the topic beginning in the subject index, of course we see Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created heaven, but we also see where we just came from, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And remember, the bottom of page note for the asterisk in John 1.1 1, 1 also referenced that Genesis 1.1 1, 1 was the beginning. So they both appear here in the subject index. So when we saw that asterisk, we know it's going to refer to in-text notes, uh, possibly bottom of the page notes, and that it will also appear in the subject index. And this is the proof of that and how that subject index works with the asterisk. As we flip back to John 1, we're also going to see some really good examples of the asterisk and some notes on the right-hand page. 
and focusing exclusively on the right-hand page, which contains the text of John 1, 4 through 1, 17. Again, we're seeing two different examples of in-text notes. That's 1, 1, the word, and 1, 17, the law. We're seeing several bottom-of-page notes here. 1, 5, light shineth in darkness. 1, 6, a man sent from God, whose name was John. All the way down to 1, 17, the topic of grace. Slightly zoomed in, but still being able to see the entire bottom of the page. If we look here in John chapter 1, 16, we read the text, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. There's an asterisk next to fullness. Uh, now we're going to see, notice there is no 1, 16 note here at the bottom of the page. If so, we would see the 1, colon 16 and a bold topic for that note. So instead, we know that asterisk simply means that fullness is going to appear in the subject index. If we were to look it up, we'd see it's on page 1918 under the F for fullness in the subject index. Uh, but instead, uh, we'll take a look here also at uh, a closer look at John 1.17. And we see that John 1.17, it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So several things going on there. Uh, of course, the most obvious one we see is going to be this in-text note of 117, the law. But notice there's also a 117 bottom of page note here for grace. When we take an even closer look at John 1:17, we're going to see there's actually one, two, three different asterisks appearing in this verse. One for law was given, uh, the other one by Moses, and then the other one, of course, is going to be Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Uh, so we know there's some combination that those are going to appear either in bottom of page notes, in text notes, or in the subject index. So the one concerning the law, I would assume the for the law was given, is going to refer to this in text note on 117, the law. It says the law was given by God to Moses for the Jewish people to observe. It was just and right, and it demanded that all wrongdoing should be punished. It showed God's holiness and justice, but it could never save people, for they could not keep it perfectly. Gives you the reference there of Galatians 3.11. And then, while God has always been gracious, His grace was perfectly demonstrated through the death of His Son in the sinner's place. Thus, grace came by Jesus Christ. So the end of that verse, came by Jesus Christ, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Whereas the bottom of page note, 117 grace, says that grace means undeserved kindness. What a great doctrine. This does not mean that God has changed or that he just passes over or overlooks sin. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he bore the divine judgment for mankind's sins. Therefore, God could deal with us in grace, forgiving us when we do not deserve forgiveness. So we're getting the idea there. You've basically got the gist already. Everything that's going on in this KJV Rock of Ages study Bible. The subheadings there, Jesus Christ is the light. Uh, there's one a little further out there, the Roman numeral 2, which they're going to correspond to the outline from the introduction to the book of the Bible. We're seeing, we saw the in-text map for 117, the law. You're seeing all the various bottom of page notes uh, that are going to correspond to those asterisks that are in the text. Uh, notice that uh, there is no center column. Uh, there's, there's basically less distraction in the text other than those asterisks. There's really no other markings. Um, and when, the, when there is the presence of an in-text note, you can see it is very clearly set off and separated uh, that, hey, this is not scripture text. Only this regular text is the scripture text. Uh, you're seeing that uh, another really nice thing, the, the font size, while the font, both of them are very bold and easy to read. And the note text is not significantly smaller than the biblical text, the regular scripture verse text. That's nice. Sometimes you'll, it'll, it gets a little chintzy and it gets a little smaller um, when you're going to those features. So uh, both, whether you're reading the notes or reading the in-text notes or the text itself, very readable, really very clear font here in the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible. I like that. Just a couple of pages over and we get to John chapter 3. We're seeing a lot of things on this page as well. There's our first example of the words of Christ in red, a red letter text. That's a very nice shade of red. It's a, it's a dark and bold red on the page. Um, and we're seeing, again, quite a bit more text. The text section on this uh, the left-hand page is a little larger. Um, you're still getting one in-text note. You're still getting a couple of bottom-of-page notes. Versus the right-hand page, you're starting to see uh, there's this really cool, that's going to be an article on John 3.3 called Born Again. 
And then you're seeing those bottom of page notes below that article. So you're going to see it's going to vary how much text, uh, the ratio of text to notes that you're going to get from page to page. But remember, there are thousands of bottom of page notes. There are 975 in text notes. Then there are 32 maps and 35 in text charts. And I'm not even sure how many articles uh, because there are a lot of them, but uh, we'll take a look here on the right hand page. Let's take a look at that article on John 3, 3, born again, sliding over to the right hand page. We're here in John chapter three. We'd like to read this section in our videos quite a bit, but we know that the appropriate heading, the talk with Nicodemus, you're seeing the examples of the red letter text and we're seeing that article, John 3, 3, born again. Very fitting that this article on the topic of born again appears here right below John 3.16, possibly the greatest and most famous verse in the Bible that deals with the topic of salvation. But we can read here in this article, we have all been born once and have human fathers. This first birth gave us a human life and a sinful human nature handed down from Adam. And before we can be saved and know God, we must have what is known as a second birth or born again. God gives us a new nature, a new life that is like him and desires to please him. Only people who have this new life are Christians. The Bible concludes man's first birth is condemned and without blessing. Twins in the Old Testament illustrate this. Esau, the firstborn, had no blessing from God, but Jacob, the secondborn, did. The firstborn had to be redeemed by blood, according to Exodus 13, 13 through 15. This shows the first birth is needed or is in need of redemption. A Christian is one who is born again by the Holy Spirit, which you can read about in verse 6. It says the Lord Jesus Christ made it clear that even those people who live an upright life like Nicodemus, a devout Jew, must be born again. The new birth comes when we take Jesus as our Savior. See also the John 3, 16, uh, the 3, 15 through 16 note on eternal life. And it is a spiritual birth in verse 5. The Holy Spirit leads us to believe the truths of the Bible and put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, our sin bearer. And then it says, read Romans 3, 23, 6, 23, 5, 8, 10, 9 through 10 for the process of the new birth. And that actually works very well. Uh, if you were to, in the beginning of the Bible, there is the section on the Romans road, and it's going to, of course, list out those exact same verses. But the, the point, I know that was a longer article there, but the point is, this is an example of, once again, study notes you can trust uh, that appear here in the Rock of Ages Study Bible. You can get an idea that these are, this, these are very fundamental and fundamentally sound uh, notes and doctrine here in this Bible. Uh, excellent doctrine, excellent explanation, and perfect placement here with the story of Nicodemus where Jesus tells him, you must be born again. He, he didn't understand that. Well, this gives you a lot of background that you wouldn't have. That's kind of the power of study Bibles if you're open to, to, these, uh, to this help, is that it gives you that additional help uh, you know, you, you may not have understood or had all that background information on the term born again, but you do uh, right where you need it and with study notes you can trust here in the Rock of Ages Study Bible. The born again article from John 3.3 3 also referenced the eternal life article or in text note for John 3.15-16. through 16. And continuing with that theme, we can read that when a person is born into this world, they have physical life that lasts until death. When they are born again, they receive eternal life, which is the life of God and never ends. When their body dies at the end of life, they go to heaven to be with God and continue living the eternal life started here in this life. John's gospel and epistles have a great deal to say about this. Eternal life is more than quantity. However, it is quality also. It is the life of Christ and the believer. People who die without Christ as Savior exist forever in hell. And perhaps the perfect follow-up from John 3, the born again article, and the eternal life in text notes, brings us here to Romans chapter 1, and we see verses 16 through 17, there's an excellent in-text note called salvation by faith. And this note on salvation by faith says, salvation is in three tenses, past, every believer has been saved from the guilt and penalty of sins, present, every believer is being saved daily from the power of a sin in his life, and future, every believer will be saved from, uh, from even the presence of sin in his nature, so that in heaven he will be without sin and become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. 
in bestowing salvation on us, God uses the way of faith instead of the way of works. Very important distinction there. He offers his righteousness only to those who believe, and faith in the cases of salvation and righteousness is distrusting self and trusting another. In this case, God. It is believing that what he says is true before we see that it is. And so why are we taking the time? Why am I taking the time? You may be asking, Lynn, what, why are we showing all these? Why are we reading all these examples of notes? It's because we want our customers to know exactly what they're getting, uh, both inside and out. We like to spend just as much time on the inside of these Bibles as we do showing the covers and the edge line bindings, things like that. Uh, because the text is important, and especially on a study Bible. We want you to have an idea. What is the doctrine? What is the flavor of these notes? What what are they saying? Is is, is this something that uh, that you agree with? And pretty doggone good doctrine here, in, in, um, in certainly my opinion. Um, I like that it's fitting that this is also right above the Romans 116 gospel note, uh, but there's some excellent doctrine there on the term born again, on the term eternal life in John 3, and now salvation by faith. Uh, once again, three excellent, in our opinion, examples of study notes you can trust in the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible and prove that this is a very fundamentally sound King James Study Bible. Several more excellent examples of articles and features here in the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible brings us here to Matthew chapter 3. On the left-hand page, notice at the bottom two-thirds of the page there are articles and notes. The 3.7 article is the Pharisees and Sadducees. 3.11 is various baptisms. Now see that we're getting our first example of an in-text map as well, which appropriately titled Jesus, Baptism, and Temptation appearing very close here to this various baptisms article. Again, tons more notes. Uh, as we said, the ratio is going to change from page to page, but you know this is a very full-featured uh, King James Study Bible. Again, there's no center column references. Uh, there's very few things uh, distracting in the actual text itself that you're reading, and they very clearly uh, define where the scripture ends and the special features and study sections begin, such as the in-text maps the bottom of the page notes, the articles. A few pages over, another article example, Matthew 6, 9, the Lord's Prayer. More red letter text examples were here in the Sermon on the Mount. We already showed John 3, 3, born again. Acts 2, 1, article on Pentecost. Right hand page is an in-text map called countries of the people mentioned at Pentecost. Acts 28, 16, article on Paul and Rome. It appears here at the end of the book of Acts, which actually is preceded by, if you look through, sprinkle throughout Acts, several intact maps, including all three of Paul's missionary journeys and also Paul's journey to Rome. And last article example here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32, on the church. Notice that number one says local, the church of God, which is at Ephesus, churches of Galatia, etc. They are local New Testament churches. I like that. There are also several in-text charts. Remember, 32 in total. First example here, Genesis 22:17, the family tree of Abraham. Exodus 9:27, the 10 plagues. Exodus 12:12, 12, 12, the gods and goddesses of Egypt, such as Osiris, Isis, and Ammon. Exodus 27, the tabernacle and its furnishings. Psalm 80, verse 1, shepherds in the Bible, spanning all the way from Abel and Abraham to David and the shepherds at Jesus' birth. Isaiah 22, the Old Testament prophets and their messages. Isaiah 56, popular readings from Isaiah. Acts 16, 26, earthquakes in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 8, 5, false gods in New Testament times. To Hebrews 11, 1, great heroes of the faith listing out all the way from Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, all the way down to David and Samuel. And this is probably the best and clearest example of an in-text chart versus what we'd probably call an article, such as the John 3, 3, born again example. This is clearly listed out as a chart, and it's a very big and much larger chart as compared to some of the smaller ones, such as earthquakes in the Bible. And Revelation 3, 6, the seven churches. On this one, uh, is it a chart? Is it an article? Hard to say. It might actually be an article. It's probably both. 
Uh, it's more so just listing out these seven churches in their description. So I'd lean more towards chart, but it could be both. And of course, uh, this is referring to the seven churches of the Revelation, which one page before we're seeing that in text note. But good example there, article, chart, uh, whatever you want to call it, it's definitely helpful. And final example of what we believe to be an in-text chart is here, Revelation 6, 1, the outline for Revelation chapter 6 through 20. It seems more clearly to be a chart than an article, especially as compared to Revelation 3, 6, the seven churches. Uh, just the way that this is, it's outlined and the way it feels and the way it's organized, it's more like a chart. Uh, it's still completely separate from the regular outline of Revelation and the book introduction that you can also read. Uh, but just giving you an idea again, the power of the in-text charts and the just the volume of the in-text charts here in the Rock of Ages study Bible. There are lots of really good in-text map examples as well. Remember, 35 in total here in Ezra 3, the return from exile. Slightly closer shot, the return from exile the path that the children of Israel took. Hosea 14, Jerusalem during the time of the prophets. Jerusalem during the time of the prophets. Matthew 3.11, as we've shown before, Jesus' baptism and temptation map. Closer look at Jesus' baptism and temptation from Nazareth to Jerusalem. Luke 20, Jerusalem during the ministry of Jesus. Closer look at Jerusalem during the ministry of Jesus. When you purchase your own Rock of Ages Bible copy, I recommend comparing this map to the one in Hosea chapter 14, which was Jerusalem during the time of the prophets. Acts 13, Paul's first missionary journey, with the Acts maps culminating here in Acts chapter 27 and 28, Paul's journey to Rome. If you continued flipping through Acts, you would have also seen maps for Paul's second and third missionary journeys as well. And the final in-text map example is Revelation 2, the seven churches of the Revelation, as we previously showed before, that it pairs very well with the chart or article on the seven churches in Revelation 3, 6. So you can actually look on the map and see for yourself, this is where the seven churches, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Smyrna, Ephesus, Philadelphia, and Laodicea were located. The KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible also has a pure, trustworthy KJV Cambridge text we see here in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You can see it even from here, capital S in Spirit. We love seeing that. That's the correct capitalization in any good King James text. 2 Timothy 3, 17, that the man of God may be perfect, Throughly furnished unto all good works, T-H-R-O-U-G-H-L-Y, throughly, not thoroughly, correct spelling here in the Rock of Ages study Bible. And 1 John chapter 5 and verse 8, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, capital S, Spirit, and the water, and the rest of the verse says, and the blood, and these three agree in one. We like seeing that capital S in Spirit, that is the correct spelling and correct capitalization of S, referring to the deity of God and the trinity of the Holy Spirit. Past the book of Revelation, you get to the back of the Bible features, which is labeled the indexes and maps, and that includes the subject index, New Oxford Bible Concordance, and the New Oxford Bible Maps. We already showed an example of the subject index to the Rock of Ages Study Bible from the asterisk mark in John 1.1 and the in the beginning term. But the subject index is alphabetical and it's where you can find any person, place, or theme that you would like to study in the Rock of Ages Study Bible. You can find it here in the subject index and then it will list the different examples and verses and references for you to look up concerning that topic. And the subject index is 32 pages in length. The subject index is followed by a 200-page New Oxford Bible Concordance to the King James Bible. The New Oxford Bible Concordance shows the book, chapter, and verse location of the most prominent words in the KJV and supplies several words of the context in which each word is found. A 200-page concordance is very substantial and a welcome addition to any KJV study Bible, which is followed by the New Oxford Bible Maps and the index to those Bible Maps with a few blank pages for notes in between before we get to those maps. 
with nine Bible maps in total, and this is of course in addition to the 35 in-text maps throughout the Rock of Ages Study Bible that we've shown several examples of in this video. So there you have it, friends and KJV Bible fans, KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible Premium Imitation Leather Edition. It features a soft premium imitation leather cover, definitely superior to a standard imitation leather, and the raised hubs on the spine, and it has an imitation leather lining, imitation leather line to the edge that's very flexible, and you see the tab there. It has gold gilded page edges. Of course, it is a Smithsone binding, which allows it to lay flat, even brand new out of the box. And then a quality 22 pound US Bible paper, equivalent to roughly a 30 to 32 GSM on European Bible paper. You get four ribbon markers and you get the gold gilded page edges here. Uh, there's also a medium to full trim size, about six and three fourths wide, nine and three fourths tall by one and three fourths inches thick. But it also has those improved top, bottom, and outside margins. It has a clear, readable, size 10 font, large print typeface, and the words of Christ in red. There are introductions and outlines to each book of the Bible, including thousands of bottom of page notes and in text notes, as well as charts and diagrams, 32 in text charts, 35 in text maps as well as those asterisk markings in the, that indicate a word or phrase is explained and appears in the subject index, presentation page and family record section, introduction and explanation of the Rock of Ages study Bible features, as well as all of those back of the Bible features on the indexes and maps, including the subject index, the New Oxford Bible Concordance, and the New Oxford Bible Maps. They are printed and bound in the USA feature a pure, trustworthy KJV Cambridge text, and really are just beautiful Bibles. But don't just take our word for it. Here's what some of our customers have to say. Several five-star reviews so far. One of them from William M. entitled, This Study Bible Surpasses Them All. I have used many different Bibles through the years, starting with the Schofield, and this year marks my 60th year in the ministry, and for the first 30, I used the Schofield. Then I used a King James Study Bible for quite a while. I used the MacArthur Study Bible off and on, but when I found the Rock of Ages Study Bible and used it for several weeks, I found it to be the best I've used. The notes and articles are so helpful. Thank you for leading me to this grand edition of the Word of God. And another one from Jeffrey, entitled Excellent Study Bible, says, I have the ROA Study Bible in imitation leather. The study tools are extremely useful and intuitive to use. There's an introduction and outline for each book, maps, illustrations, and expanded notes included in the text body and page bottom study notes. Historical dates mentioned in the notes are from Bishop Usher. Words of Christ are in red from Matthew to Revelation. The text size is a 10 point font for easy reading and the notes are fundamental and conservative. The Bible itself is constructed very well with good paper quality and the textured imitation leather is soft, supple, and feels like a quality leather cover. The binding appears sewn, and book block page edges are gold gilded. The Bible is printed and bound in the United States by the Rock of Ages Press, and the Bible has a subject index in the back with a generous concordance and nine pages of full color maps. I find this to be an excellent study Bible of exceptional quality, construction, and materials. I highly recommend it. Sometimes our customers really do say it best. As such, we hope you enjoyed this video preview of the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible Premium Imitation Leather Edition from the KJV Store, the number one source for King James Version Bibles, where KJV happens to be our middle name. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to sending you your next KJV Bible soon.